Well, hello, everyone. Welcome to World at War Comics. My next special guest is Mr. Eric O'Connor. He is the writer and creator of Euphoria. Man, so good to have you here, man. Good to meet you, too, Eric. Yeah, it's good to meet you, man. Yeah, I appreciate it. Uh, you know, other partners, you know, collaborating and all that other stuff, getting the word out there. <laughs> yeah, for sure. I'm sure Rob is such an awesome guy, man. And I was glad yeah. that he brought us together, man. I love that dude. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, we're doing uh, what we recorded a session and then what happened was uh there was microphone feedback so we got to re-record so we're probably gonna do that a little after a little later you know in the uh summertime i think yeah i've been there done that man it's very frustrating but yeah it's probably <laughs> usually on my end too just the lack of knowledge of technology yeah yeah it's hard <laughs> to keep up with that stuff man it is for sure man for sure well i'm glad to have you man i would love to kind of talk about euphoria but i thought before we get into that maybe we could talk a little bit about your background how you got into comics, um, how you got into um, writing, um, where that creative side of you started in your life. Can you start there? Yeah. Um, I mean, my love of comics started when I was like very young. Yeah. So like I started reading um, Batman Nightfall was one of the ones I really remember reading. And then I had all the toys and everything like that. Azrael was really cool. I was like, oh, this is like a gold Batman. What? <laughs> like, you know, so for me as a kid, uh, I started there and then I went to my first comic book store. Uh, it was called the muck time and it was right down the like highway from us. And then they had moved again and relocated. Um, but they're no longer in, um, in commission right now. They're doing online stuff and resourcing, which is unfortunate, but this is what happens with small, you know, shops. Um, but that's where I started and I started having a pull list there. And, you know, that's how I started collecting. Um, as far as writing, I never really wrote anything until I started uh, college. So I was in college. I was like 19, 18 years old. And then uh, I started writing this story, actually, in particular. This was going to be a novel. And I actually wanted it to be like a big, like, you know, thriller book, like, you know, like a Stephen King type of thing, like, you know, do a thousand pages. And then um, one of my friends who actually I'll get into in a minute, um, he said to me at a convention, he's like, why don't you make it episodic? And I was like, what do you mean? And then he's like, make it into a comic. And I was like, you can do that. <laughs> like, You know, there's no rules against that. So, you know, what happened was uh, uh, I just started you know, doing my due diligence, researching, doing everything I possibly can to uh, figure out how to write comic book scripts. And um, I had a lot of help from both my friends, my friend Joe and my friend uh, Matt. Um, so I started there and then that's, it just became like, you know, a story that was just created, that it was just my baby and it's still my baby. And it's like, you know, anything I write, you know, prior to this or it's like it's not really what i want to do it's this this is my baby here this is what i really want like to get go off and like have netflix series or anything like that or ongoing shows and stuff like this is what i want from it um but yeah this is that's how i started writing and uh going back to joe and matt i actually worked with them um, at this grocery store and we didn't know that each other was into comics and all this other stuff and then we had no idea that we wrote comics and all this other stuff so uh, it was so amazing that we just figured out like as in our adult lives <laughs> we figured out that we all write comics so now we're all creators um, Joe had published uh, for Dark Horse he wrote uh, Children of the Woods for Dark Horse Um Matt Sumo is doing his thing with uh, Bardic Verses, you know, from Band of Bards. And like, you know, he's going off and then it's like, it's just awesome seeing everybody just be successful in the industry now, you know. And uh, I got to give a lot of credit to them because they helped me a lot throughout like the process and everything. And, you know, taught me about Kickstarter. You know, the first one kind of failed and fell through. But like the reason why was because I didn't really know enough. I was naive. Yeah. You know, we all make mistakes. But, you know, um, the second one here that we have out for the second um, volume is uh, well thought out <laughs> until up until actually two days ago when someone told me that they're like, oh, 
can you get uh, the digital copy for both of them in a bundle? And I was like, oh, shit, I forgot about that. <laughs> so I, can't, I went back and made that a rewards tier. So I was like, oh, okay. So, yeah, that's that's pretty much the story, man. Sweet, man. Well, let's jump into the Kickstarter and take a look. Yeah. Pull this bad boy up, and then we can walk through, uh, you know, everything that you got going on here. But here it is, Euphoria Volume 2. Um, can you kind of talk to, like, are you in Georgia right now? Is that where you're from? No, I'm from New York. <laughs> okay, why Georgia and why 1989? I thought that was very specific. It is. It yeah. is. So I had this fixation of like wanting to, you know, travel to the south for some reason. Like I haven't traveled to Louisiana or Georgia, but something is like drawing me there. I don't know what it is. Maybe it's from Forrest Gump or something from Alabama, <laughs> like seeing like how Forrest Gump was or something, but there's a lot of wooded area there, but in particular, I thought about it and I was like, where would someone want to hide out where you would not know exactly like, like, you know, where they are or something like that. Or if someone, uh, we'll get into it, but the, the antagonist of the story, you know, kind of wants, has been hiding out for a long time. And, you know, you'll see that, that, you know, he hasn't been caught doing what he's doing yet. But uh, as far as 89, I just like the aesthetic of the 80s. And um, to be honest with you, it's easier writing a story without having cell phones or pay phones or anything like that. <laughs> so that this way you could kind of rule those out. Um, but another reason why I chose 89 was because of um, the music. Mm -hmm. And when I write, I listen to music like a lot of people do. A lot of creators, artists, they listen to music as they write. And um, every time I listen to a song, I specifically think of a scene that can play out to the song and how the protagonist is feeling at the time. You can kind of portray it through the song as well as putting it on the page. Mm -hmm. So I said to myself, like, has anyone done that before or is that weird or you know is that like something that like people are into like i was kind of trying to experiment a little bit um so that's when i came up with the playlist for uh euphoria and it's just you know music that fits you know from 1950s doo-wop music to 1989 or 1980s like techno music or like you know synth pop yeah. So it's it ranges. But if you take a closer look at it, you know, um, while reading the book, you'll get another story. So mm. the story that I, it's trying to portray is how he's feeling at the time when it's happening. And the lyrics kind of portray a different like uh, perspective for it. You know, that's cool. Yeah, I saw at the end, there's like a playlist yeah um, we'll get into so that makes a lot more sense now i was wondering what the playlist how that related to the the kickstarter but that's pretty cool man yeah yeah thank you um i thought it was a unique idea i was just again i was scared to do it because yeah. no one else has done it before you know like so i'm thinking like um i even said to <laughs> this is gonna be a funny story <laughs> so scott schneider comes to fourth world comics here which i frequent and i have a pull list at now um you know and i've known the owner there and then i've known all the workers that work there for a while now and they know me because i i had worked for aftershock for a little bit i'll get into that as oh, well wow. so um you know i was an ambassador to aftershock so i would go into the stores and you know, do like a little survey for them and, you know, kind of keep up with all the local shops. So that's how they knew me. But um, Scott Schneider, one time he he came in there for an autograph signing. It was years ago. And I was like, you know, just kind of publishing the first one, self-publishing it. No Kickstarter, just my own money. Um, so I had asked him a question because I had an ending for the book. And I just wanted to make it like no dialogue, no speaking, just you're playing a song, you're listening to it, and you're looking at the art, going at your own pace, 
you know, kind of flipping through the pages and then listening to the music, letting the music take you to that ending. Mm. And I asked him, I said, you know, is that something that creators have done? Is it a stupid idea? And then he goes, well, what's what's stupid about it? And I was like, well, maybe it's just in my own head. And then he's like, you know, all artists get that. And then he was telling me how he thinks that I should just do it. Just do it. That was his advice. Just <laughs> just do it. Nike, just do it. <laughs> so basically from that, it gave me a little bit more motivation to continue with like what I was doing, even though it was weird or awkward or not, you know, playing the same cards as something else, you know. So I took that advice and I just continued, just, you know, wrote, 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 wrote. And then I finished the story. I think I have uh, 12 or 13 books already written besides this. Mm. So, you know, oh, wow. story is already played out. It's just a matter of getting it out there now. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's pretty awesome, man. Congratulations, too. And I think getting advice from uh, Scott Snyder is a pretty good thing, man. Yeah. <laughs> I think he's done a couple things in comics, so he's probably a good resource. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's jump into the Kickstarter, man. Um, so right now you're about 20% to go, but a lot of time to go. So I think that's a yeah. pretty good start where I assume you're like three days in maybe. You had 45 days? Uh, no, I started with... Uh... I think it was 60 days okay but it was it was it's the first time that i did it i made it 30 yeah uh, that was my own fault because like i my following is very little <laughs> you know so it's it's hard to get it out there unless other people that like, kind of see it and then share it yeah. but it, it does help when people start sharing stuff um Absolutely. you know and then doing these podcasts with you like that's why i appreciate you and Man. everyone else giving me a chance giving me an opportunity to kind of speak myself freely you know yeah that's awesome man yeah absolutely i mean uh, i'm a big indie comic fan so i'm on kickstarter shopping around quite a bit and it's always great to to meet new creators and then find out what they're doing so let, let's kind of jump in man but again you're at about 20 percent to go with plenty of time mm -hmm. so you know you you get to that like middle part of kickstarter and it, we call it the dead zone or the valley there's just nothing happens so you yeah. usually get like a little bump at the very beginning for like the first five days and then nothing. And then like the last five days, people come through. So the fight is really in the valley, right? Trying to get the right. message out to gain as much there because you don't want to be short in that last five days because you only get so much, right? And uh, trust me, I've I've done Kickstarters and failed too, man. And there's a lot of learnings in it. So uh, you're, yeah. you're not alone, my friend, Eric. Yeah. <laughs> we've, all, we've all had bad... Uh, I don't know if they're bad. I mean, they're they're all good experiences to go through, but it's very frustrating. Right. It's a very stressful yeah. process. As as like a creator too, like you know, you kind of get that, you know. Well, every creator gets it. You get that point where you're like, "Is this good enough? Yeah. Or yeah. can I make it? Or you know, um, like a, a pushback, you know." And then like for me, I kind of take that and kind of harness it like you know mm -hmm. like any artist does like you know you just kind of take that but instead of becoming that you know self reclused kind of you know like forget it you yeah. know i put it into my writing yeah and then like kind of use that as fuel to kind of continue and keep going keep going keep going yeah, like you, know, awesome. you haven't reached it like you haven't reached that goal what's the what's the point of stopping right you know? exactly you cannot you cannot let anything stop you like you know like i actually just got off the phone with my dad and he said something to me that was funny i started laughing and he's like um he's like how's your how's your kickstarter going and i was like oh you know it's slowly going there and then he's like oh maybe you should kind of like cut it off and not do it and i was like you know that's not me like <laughs> just not in the cards man it's yeah. i cut from a different cloth than you i don't give up <laughs> no it's all good man you just gotta you gotta get really aggressive on social media and get the word out but uh you know doing podcasts helps man trust me i do podcasts when yeah. i have my uh my title coming up too and it does help man you get a little boost you get new fans all that good stuff so i think you're doing the right things man you just gotta be super aggressive especially yeah. in the valley part you know eric is a tough one man yeah yeah but it's all good man it looks really good the art looks awesome Let's kind of Thank go through you. it. So this is a, I believe this is the cover of issue one. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. That's it's issue cool. one. That's the first page of issue one. 
That's awesome, man. And there's uh the what do you want to call it the uh the prologue. So it's kind of like um like kind of like Shakespearean type of like you know um writing I went with and that <laughs> my friend Matt of course helped me with it because I was like should I do a prologue does it make sense I was like you know because it's going to be from a third person perspective mm. overall so I was like you know he's like I'll oh, do it and I was like okay so then I went to him for editing purposes and he helped me and you know we got this which was like some of my best writing yeah uh, you know, and it's just, I think it's a good introduction to the fans and to readers, you know, uh, into what is about to happen or what you're going to see in the coming pages, you know? Wow. Well, this page is dope, man. Who's the artist? Uh, Marcelo. Uh, wow. He is from Brazil. Mm -hmm. And my only means of contacting him and is um, through email and he uses Google Translate, so he doesn't speak English at all. Yeah. <laughs> so he reads it, and then it's just amazing to me how I met him on Comics Collab Reddit, the subreddit. Yeah, and yeah. He was just like everything I could have possibly wanted for this for this series. Um, I had, you know, several artists message me, and I looked at their art and. His just stood out to me. I was like, this is perfect for exactly what I need. And what happened was <laughs> every time he sent me back a page, it was like exactly how I envisioned <laughs> it in my mind. And he did not have to edit a damn thing, which That's is awesome. Crazy. He never That's had to edit a single thing, except, yeah. <laughs> except there is one uh, page you'll see in book one where Arlo is kind of, um, Arlo is the, uh, the main character, the the serial yes. killer. Yes. And then he was like fixing his tie and then he had like blood on his hands. And then I was like, he had like a plain shirt that he drew. Yeah. And I was like, wow, can you make some design on there? Make it look like a little bit 80s or something. <laughs> and he's like, I don't really understand what you mean, but he's like, I'll try. <laughs> <laughs> so he came back with something and then it was like a little design on the shirt. And I was like, all right, that's cool. <laughs> yeah, that's awesome, man. I mean, you could tell he's a good artist because hands are usually really difficult for most people. Right. Dude, the the art on the hands is so awesome. The blood dripping everywhere. Yeah. yeah it, intriguing, man. Yeah. It was crazy how, like, again, like, he didn't have to edit a thing. And then <laughs> he told me, too, like, he said that he lives, like, out by the woods and stuff like that. He said that when he read the book or the script, rather, for the first time, he was, like, scared. <laughs> and then he, said he needed to lock his doors and windows after like, <laughs> reading it because he was like, you know, because I kept telling him like, oh, you know, this can happen to anybody. And I was like, yeah. you know, and then he's like, wait a minute, what are you talking about? What? <laughs> he's like, I don't want it to happen to me. It's like, it's, it's, it's not me. <laughs> <laughs> that's awesome. I mean, that's, I think that's a good sign though, right? That's the reaction that you want on a horror book. So you, I think you yeah. get it, <laughs> Yeah, I mean, it's just, it's, you get that, like, you know, like all artists do, like everyone will be like, oh, it's good. It's great. It's this, it's that. It's, I was like, give me, give me some negative feedback. Yeah, <laughs> you know? yeah. Like, I want to hear what you hate about it because I was like, that's how I'm going to improve, you know, like that's, that's what I want, you know? Yeah. True, 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 true. Yeah. Well, it's cool, man. So, you know, give us a little bit of a synopsis if you could, right? 1989, Georgia. Tell us a little bit about, uh, Ario. Is it Ario? yeah arlo 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 sorry yeah, yeah that's okay yeah, yeah. It's, it's a it's a southern name i honestly to um it's so funny how i came up with the name because i didn't want to use this name in particular but it's a southern name and it's like it popped up on like because i was searching like southern names like really deep south names <laughs> <laughs> and then you know some of them where i was like nah that doesn't fit that doesn't fit that doesn't fit and then I looked at Arlo because I kept passing it because it's one of my um, tattoo artists. His um, He had another tattoo artist in the shop. This guy's name is Mike. He had a dog named Arlo. Uh -huh. And I was like, I don't want to name him Arlo after the dog because the dog is an amazing dog. And he's so yeah. cute. <laughs> I was like, <laughs> I just can't name him Arlo. But I ended up doing it anyway. <laughs> Arlo is your killer dog, huh? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, um, 
Yeah, so the story is basically about um this man Arlo Dar Arlo Derringer who's trying to find himself, figure out why he's doing what he's doing. Um, he's trying to figure out, you know, what makes him uh, you know, kill and you know, kind of like a Dexter esque, but he doesn't necessarily kill people that quote unquote deserve it, or he doesn't follow a code or anything like that. So um he's doing his thing murdering people and you know all the live long day like life is good you know <laughs> until um he meets uh gordon which is the protagonist in the story and he is a more prolific serial killer who is actually hunting him oh wow. and the reason for their interaction uh that you'll see in the first book um Gordon had actually murdered someone on his quote unquote territory. Mm -hmm. So he knows exactly where he disposes of his bodies. He knows exactly what time, what place, where he's at, where he's located. And he murders someone on his territory and leaves him there as bait. So as he left him there for bait, then Arlo took the bait, obviously, because he doesn't want anyone infringing on his territory. Um, as he comes there, he's greeted by him. He's grisly, you know, very disheveled looking uh, old man who comes up to him big and bigger than him. Um, and he offers him a game, like a kill or be killed type of game. Oh, wow. So he says to Arlo, like, things that you don't necessarily know are true or not. Mm -hmm. So as a reader, you're like, is he lying or is he telling the truth? So he claims to be um, the killer of all these unsolved murders, like the Zodiac killer, the phantom killer of Tex Arcana, uh, the Black Dahlia murderer. Uh, he claims to be the person who killed all these people. And in doing so, he became so detached and prolific that he decided he wanted to hunt for um bigger game which he thinks is serial killers oh so wow. he hunts down other serial <laughs> more challenging killers. right yes because it's more challenging yeah. and there was a passage that i read from uh the zodiac killer that actually said and i quote that hunting and killing normal people or normal citizens is not fair game. And he said that he was bored of it, which is, you know, kind of the story of like, you know, how Gordon is who he is, or he is who he says he is because right. the proof is in the pudding kind of stuff. Um, you'll never find out until the end. I'm not telling anybody what happened, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but um you know, that's that's basically the story. And, you know, Arlo kind of accepts the challenge and, you know, he thinks that it's going to kind of um, help him figure out who he is, because, you know, this is a this is a guy who knows what I deal with all the time. You know what I mean? So that's yeah. how he's feeling. So he just wants to, you know, put him up to the challenge. But in the first book, you kind of see that he kind of has no hesitation with it and doesn't know exactly what he's getting into. Yeah. Um, because he was very, you know, kind of, you know, stay off my territory. I'm the top dog. Get out of here. You know? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so um, there's also a point where he says, Gordon says how, um, he started off killing all these serial killers. He killed seven serial killers, which is like in coral. I wanted to wanted it to be in correlation of seven deadly sins. Mm. Um, so he has killed like seven very prolific serial killers that you have never heard of before because they just kind of disappeared, you know, uh -huh. like they never got caught or anything and then there's like points in the time where he mentions other serial killers and you know why they got caught or you know how stupid or naive they were because he quote unquote met them mm. you know so um how they didn't want to accept his challenge you know what i mean so uh like for instance i think 
in one of the books i had him meet uh ted bundy uh-huh. and he how he's very arrogant naive and uh what is the what is the other word i used i think it was i forget what the hell it was now but he called him arrogant and naive and he said that he didn't want to deal with anything mm. other than what he was doing and then he said yeah. he's bound to get caught which he did <laughs> like, <laughs> Yeah. Um, yeah so that's that's basically the story and incredible you know, arlo arlo kind of thinks of him as like the devil uh-huh so there's like you know like on the on the spotify playlist you'll you'll see like you know kind of uh like uh, i think there's um devil went down to georgia and <laughs> that, that whole story like when you listen to it is like, damn, is that the story that he's going through? You know what right, I mean? Yeah. <laughs> is that how he's seeing it? Mm-hmm. Like, you know, like the devil bowed his head because he knew that he'd been beat and he laid the golden fiddle on the ground at Johnny's feet. And he said, devil, if you ever just come on back, if you ever want to try again, I told you once you son of a bitch on the best has ever been. <laughs> <laughs> like, you know what I mean? Like, it's yeah. like, does he become that or does that happen? Or like, you know, but um, yeah, you're in for a surprise with that. <laughs> so I'll leave that open to the minds of the masses, you know. There you so. go, man. That's so cool, man. And then as far as putting the playlist together, what was the process of doing that? Did you kind of, as you were writing, you already knew the songs that you wanted to attach to that section? Or did you just do it like a deep dive into songs to find ones that related? So what I would do is like, um, I would listen to music from the 80s specifically Mm -hmm. first and then you know there was a couple songs i was like here and there you know i was like okay there's this there's that and i was like all right well you know it's not going to be all 80s songs i figured to myself it could be stuff before yeah period of time but i just want to keep people in the 80s aesthetic too you know like keep people set in the 80s because that's where it takes place But um, there are other songs on there that you'll see from the 70s, the 60s, the 50s. uh, But they all play a part and they all play a role in in the the, the series. But, you know, um, when I thought about it, it was just, you know, it would like be one scene. So I think the first the first one that you'll see is Tainted Love by Soft Cell. That was literally the first thing that I ever thought of when I was like 19 writing this book and then like you know um i was like yeah like wouldn't it be cool if like someone was murdering someone to the to the <laughs> scene, you know, this song like you know like it sounds like such a like messed up concept <laughs> but like it just came to my head and i was like wow like you know like and then i started really listening to the lyrics and then it's like you know it's almost like a possession kind of thing. Like, you know, this tainted love you've given, I give you everything a boy could give you take my tears, but please don't break me. You know, it's like, uh, man, it just, to me, it was almost like, um, you know, he's kind of singing it, but he doesn't realize that the lyrics pertain to exactly how he's feeling. So Mm -hmm. the readers should pick up on that like right away, you know, but, um, yeah, that's that's really how my process worked. I just basically thought of scenes that can work with certain songs and, you know, uh, the kind of symbolism that goes across with it, you know, like kind of crossing barriers instead of it being just a, a visual and like, you know, you reading and, you know, kind of taking everything in. You're also listening. Yeah. So that's it awesome. just plays on almost all senses <laughs> and is there like uh markings within um your book to tell you to tell the reader when to play the song like how do they know what song to play at what time so um that's actually a good question because um reed who actually worked on the lettering and editing he said to me how are we going to do that so i said okay um is it possible that we can just put like music with it and then he's like yeah we could have you know he's singing or it's coming from the you know boom box or you know vice versa or whatever and i was like okay like you know he um kind of made like and these little annotations or something um i think they're cleft notes if yeah, I'm not cleft notes. yeah yeah 
<laughs> so he had those and then he puts those right on the before the bubble oh, that's uh, cool. so that know that he's either singing it or it's coming from somewhere yeah you know yeah. so that's so cool man again we only, had, we only had the one done you know so the other ones i think are going to be a little bit more difficult because that's the music that's playing in the background ah uh, okay because this one he was actually singing and then there's going to be a, where he's singing as well and then like kind of like playing out like a scenario in his head and i think there was one it was a 50s song um in the still of the night oh yeah you know that song <laughs> um he he's actually laying down and he's defeated and i think the panel is supposed to pan up like you know just like watching over him like uh -huh. from the eye and it's supposed to pan up and up and up and up almost like a manic type of like you know um moment that he has and then he's singing in the still of the night by himself just alone and defeated like you know just at that moment just like, like it sent chills on writing it because i was like this is like my best work yeah <laughs> like, yeah <laughs> that's so cool man i cannot wait to get uh the issue to check it out how you put it all together man yeah. that's awesome well, let's go through some of the uh the ways that you could back um, right. um so right here here's the physical copies of both um volume one and two so if you missed out on that first issue this is your chance to kind of catch up right right yeah so it'll be volume one uh volume two and you can get variants because there oh, okay. are a couple of variant covers okay for volume two. uh one that was uh, illustrated by will torres Oh yeah, I, Will Torres has illustrated for me too. Yeah, oh, really? <laughs> yeah, he's a good dude, awesome, man. man. Yeah. yeah, I met him at I met him at um, Eternal Con last he year. He is at every con on the East Coast, man. That's all he does, man. It's incredible. <laughs> yeah, he works, man. He hustles. <laughs> he does. He hustles. He's a hustler, man. And I keep in contact with him too because, like, you know, when I try to go to conventions or whatever, he sends me stuff. Like, oh, I'm in at Philly for the Philly Expo. And I was like, oh, I didn't get into that one. Good luck. Like, you know. Yeah, yeah. That's so cool. But, man. Uh, yeah, I, I met him at Eternal Con and I bought a piece of art from him. And then I said to him, like, you know, I was like, do you do like, can you like draw variant covers or is, like, is that something that you do? Like, because I was like, love for you to like make a variant cover for my book. He's like, absolutely. You know, like, <laughs> no problem. Yeah, that's and then awesome. he's like you just give me just give me what you want and then we'll do it i was like you have free range man i was like i'll just <laughs> tell you i'll give you the book you pick it out you decide yeah so, that's so he, cool. he actually decided on doing the uh an homage to the uh incredible hulk okay uh the wolverine on the cover with the the um his adamant was out and then you can see the hulk in the claw oh, yeah. i forget yeah. I forget which number it was. It's got to be two something. I know. It's yeah, a yeah, I know exactly. I mean, it's such a famous cover, man. <laughs> yeah, and um, you know, it, people can correct me if if I'm wrong, but I know it's a two something. It's two hundred. Yeah. <laughs> <Is it laughs> two thirty two uh, or two thirty one, maybe. I can't remember right. on my head. Yeah. yeah, and then he did that homage cover, and then it was it came out awesome. And then he's like, "Oh, do you want me to color it anymore or anything like that?" I was like, "No, dude, just leave it be. Simple as." perfect yeah you know that's awesome and man the other cover um will be my friend's cousin who who wants to get into comics and i said hey you know you want to make a variant cover for me and he's like absolutely so he just did this oil painting an oil painting oh wow this. i have it with me like it's, it's somewhere but <laughs> you know, he, he did an oil painting like you know just and and i was like that's to me, it blows my mind. I'm, yeah, I, I put so much time and effort into like did just a cover, man. Like I was like, just, just, just draw it on your computer, like you know anyone else would. He's like, nah, man. He's like, I think it would look cool as an oil painting. I'm like, all right, this is <laughs> free range, man. I give the artist free range to do whatever they want. I'm like, you know, like just do it the way that you would do it in your style. And then he killed yeah. it. You know, that's so cool, man. You know, it's a, it's kind of an image from. Um, he took it based on uh book one okay so 
just like left it like as you know he's disposing of a body and he's smoking a cigarette kind of nonchalant so it, it came out really 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 good. <laughs> that's crazy man that's awesome man well let's take a look at some of these other ones so then you you added your digital copies right so there's yes. um, one if you're missing that one um uh, here's um issue two and then there should be a bundle somewhere <laughs> yeah let's see i, I don't did, see the bundle i yet. did add the bundle for the uh the it uh, might be at the end let's see it goes yeah. by dollar amount usually. So here's the physical mm -hmm. copy of just issue two. Here's the physical that's copy the of just page. issue one. So this is the the that's the oil page. Talking about yeah. the oil pan. That's awesome, man. And that's Will Torres. Will Torres, yeah. yeah. That's cool. Very cool. So that's physical, that's very MB. And here's the digital there. bundle right here. Yeah. <laughs> One and two. Awesome, man. Yeah. I have two of them on there. Okay. <laughs> There's two. <laughs> <laughs> there you go, man. Yeah. Yeah. And then here is the variant collection for the two variants. Yes. And then be drawn into the comic. That's awesome, man. Yeah, really cool, and man. there's a couple people that had asked me too. They're like, "Can I get murdered in the comic?" And I was like, <laughs> "I was like, in volume two, we don't necessarily have anyone being murdered." So yeah. I was like, "Maybe throughout the series, if you'd like." I was like, "You know," but <laughs> I was like, "I can't, I can't just you know write that into the script that I already yeah." Had, you know, like, <laughs> That's a pretty strange request too. But uh, hey, to each their own. I want to be the person that's murdered. Please, please. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> well, that's cool, man. I mean, you got 42 days to go, plenty of time to to reach your goal. I think your goal is very attainable. Um, right. Eric will help you get the word out, man. 12 backers so far. You probably need close to like 50 or so in order to hit your goal. Um, Because I've done 2,000 before, and that's usually what it takes. Uh, yeah. But, man, that's awesome, bro. We'll, we're going to put below, we're going to put make sure that we have the Kickstarter link all your social media, all that good stuff. So we'll, we'll make sure we help you get the word out, man. But that's awesome. Thank you, man. I appreciate it. I appreciate you having me. Yeah, absolutely, man. Can you, um, I don't know if your plan is to maybe do some uh, comic cons um, with the booth. Are you, you have any plans this year so far? Anything you could share? Yes. Yeah. So um, this year I am, well, I applied to New York comic con, so we'll see. Uh, yeah or about like what you know is going to happen there but um as far as right now i'm only attending one convention in the, uh, the con in uh connecticut and sun and the, on the and that's the only one that i'm doing so far okay can you repeat that eric you kind of broke up for a second oh i'm sorry um yeah, so I was doing a terrific con in oh, uh, August and uh, that's at Mohegan sun in Connecticut. Yeah. And it's going to be August 16th through the 18th. Nice. Yeah. That's the only one that I have. That's, and it's a big one too. It's not, yeah. not really small. I was like, yeah. a lot of big names are coming there. And I was like, wow. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, I even said in the email too, I think I forget who I forget his name, but he was like, I sent to an email, the uh, creator. I was like, are you sure? Like, you I, I can get a booth like do do i have to jump through a hoop or something like what do i got to do to obtain yeah. like a booth and he's like you just got to pay for it and i was like <laughs> that's it you promised me <laughs> like <laughs> and then he's like yeah yeah that's it and then i was like yeah. well, you're gonna go and i was like thank god <laughs> like, i mean scott will be there too he usually does all those northeast ones no yeah he is he yeah. scott's there uh jim lee was gonna be there um nice. i think chips Darsky, one of my favorites um yeah yeah, a couple of my favorites are going to be there, you know, like I was like, wow, I didn't notice how big it was. I was like, you know, because I, I had just seen my friend, like, I don't, I don't mean to, you know, I I want to be with him. I want to be on the same level as him. He's yeah. He's been in this game for a long time and he's been pushing and pushing and pushing all of his stuff and all of his stuff is amazing i have every single thing he's autographed every single thing <laughs> you know it's just i've backed his kickstarters he backs mine and like you know he, he had posted something about him going to terrific con and i was like that is awesome i was like how do i get into that so i just did some research 
message who I need to message. And like I said, he just said, yeah, you can, as long as you pay for it, you can come in. And I was like, great. <laughs> That's awesome. Like, you know, like I thought it was such a big convention that like you, you just like, like a New York comic con, like, no, you're on a wait list. We'll wait like a hundred years for you to get like in, you know? <laughs> yeah. 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 Yeah, San Diego, WonderCon, New York, they're they got a yeah. lot of different rules that you kind of have to walk through in order to get ready for that. So yeah, yeah. They're 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 definitely tough, tough ones to get into. Yeah. But it's obtainable because, you know, mm -hmm. like um my friend Matt and my friend Joe have both been at New York Comic Con. We've had booths and you know, they were very successful and having their booths. So I'm like, all right, it's Eric's turn now. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> we're all gonna go. It's Eric's turn now. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's awesome, man. I, I wish you, uh, you know, nothing but uh, the best when it comes to issue two. I already ordered my issue one and two, so I can't wait to get those in my hands. The story sounds yeah. absolutely incredible. Eric, uh, I, I can't wait to get my hands on it, man. I, I love that kind of stuff. And uh, I don't know the serial ki killer thing, man. You're at the forefront of it. I don't know if you've uh, um, read Patrick uh, Horvath's uh, Beneath the Trees, but I feel like you're onto something, man. He's really uh -oh. up with his serial killer, and you you were before that, so uh, I think you're onto something, man. Yeah. So I was. It's so funny that you mentioned that too, because um, I had completely forgot about this one fact that I put in the book. So the reason for it being black, white, and red, not just the Sin City kind of effect, I wanted it to be like this is how Arlo sees life, mm. black white and red you know like that is the serial killer mentality you do not you know i'm putting people in the mind of a serial killer because you know growing up watching true crime and watching all these documentaries on serial killers you know even wanting to become a cop when i was younger like i really wanted to delve into what the hell is wrong with these people yeah. <laughs> and then why do they do what they do you know like everyone's curiosity kind of just like goes to a different place when they think about that stuff like right. how could you do that so i want to put people in the mind of that person you know what i mean like really feel something for someone that doesn't feel anything and that's hard it's mm -hmm. hard because you know they're not supposed to feel a goddamn thing you know mm -hmm. like you know throw a chair across the room you think i give a shit about that chair no that's what a <laughs> feels like you know yeah, yeah and it's you know trying to get people to connect with that is hard so that's where the music kind of plays its part because you know people connect to music and people love music so it's like okay if i can connect with this serial killer who's like you know like people can connect with dexter somehow somehow <laughs> yeah. connect with him you know, so like, I feel like somehow they can connect with him because like, this is what he sees. It's black, white and red. This is what he, you know, sees and everything. And um, at the end of the book, what I really wanted to do at the final, final panel of the book, just one big full page panel of, you know, what's going on. I'm not going to tell you what's going on, but um, at the end of it, it's like a Wizard of Oz effect. Boom. Everything's colored. Ah, uh, yeah. That's like, you know, that's the book. That's the title. It's Euphoria. He met it. That's what it is. He got to that point. He figured it out. And then this is what happened. Yeah. You know, that's awesome. Everything, everything becomes. Yeah. That's so cool, man. And then, Sounds you know, it's awesome, funny. Bro. Like, like, like I said, awesome. my, my friend, um, Joe, he actually said to me, he's like, I think you are ahead of your time because a lot of people are starting to do the same thing you're doing now with like the black, white and red or black white and one color now and i was like you know laughing and i was like you know i was like you know mimicry is the most sincerest form of flattery but i was yeah. like you know, <laughs> don't even know my book so i was like i can't just say i was like you know yeah. but it's just that people have the same creative mind that's uh, yeah. how i envision it i'm like everyone's if i must be on the right path if yeah. other people are <laughs> you know what i mean exactly man i guess well, congratulations, Eric, man. I cannot wait to get my copies, man. We'll make sure that we push this out. Anybody who's watching this, head over to Kickstarter right now. you got plenty of time, 42 days left. Make sure that you're backing issue one. If you miss issue uh, or issue two, if you miss issue one, you can get both of them on the Kickstarter. And, uh, man, it looks dope. The art looks incredible. The story sounds amazing. Eric, congratulations, man. We're pulling for you, bro. Yeah, thank you so much. I appreciate all the 
compliments and you know yeah. i appreciate you having me on this podcast today and anytime uh, man i feel like i'm living like a I feel like i'm living a dream right now it's like <laughs> this is not real <laughs> no anytime man anytime <laughs> eric you're, you're always welcome man you're always welcome all right man thank you i appreciate you man have a great rest of your week you too man take care all right you too <laughs>